What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Friday, March 19th, 2021. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the future class of video games. Blessing. Addy Oye Jr. Dude, that Falcon, that Winter Soldier, man. Ooh-wee! We just we did our fire. reacts over there. We had Paris guest with us. It was It's a scene. That show is oh good eating. You kidding yeah, me man. over there? When, yeah. um, when, can I, can, when can I make an appearance on one of the reactions? When can I make Here's the thing about it appearance? that I, I noticed that uh, we said and then never followed up on is that Tim originally, when he pitched reactions instead of the in reviews, the reactions were supposed to be whoever wants to come through and talk can come through and talk. But it really, really quickly solidified to is just the in-review crew. <laughs> we never well, ever I, I mentioned that again. Part of it is you have to like commit to doing it always, right? That was not the way we pitched it originally. Wait, the way we, we originally pitched it was every like, time? No, man. You, I, t- Kevin, Dude, Kevin, if you want to take we a week off, paying I'll you three come months through. ago. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, that's the thing. I don't think you need to take a week off of Kevin. I think you, Blessing can just come through. It doesn't matter. Yeah, Andy's got to keep making out. boxes or whatever, but Andy loves making boxes. He loves boxes. Because let me tell that's you, what, I'm I mean, into Falcon so far. And the yeah, right? Soldier. Oh, my God. Anthony Mackie, what charisma. So oh, my God. Stan, he, what charisma. They, they've, I mean, obviously, we're not going to talk about the, the actual no. details of the show because it's a gaming show. You guys don't want to hear the spoilers. But, man, those two are just so good. I was not expecting the, the show to be as good as it is and as serious as, as it is uh, with, with what it's doing with the show. It's, it's so good. Uh, of course, ladies and gentlemen, we just recorded our uh, reactions to uh, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier episode one. You can get those momentarily over on the podcast services of your choice on the screencast feed. And then, of course, on YouTube.com slash kind of funny. But enough about that. I, if there's one, We're here. We're talking about Anthony Mackie. We're talking about Sebastian Stan. Blessing, I'm sick of talking about actors. Let's talk about gaming news. Uh, what it. we're going to be talking about today is, is The Rock Dwayne Johnson in Fortnite? Uh, PlayStation buying Evo and much more because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every week, Dan, a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show at patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Of course, on patreon.com slash kind of funny games, you can be part of the show with your questions, your comments, your concerns, your squad up requests. Of course, on patreon.com slash kind of funny games, you can also get the show ad free. You can get it with the exclusive post show we do each and every weekday, and you can get a bunch of cool perks like. Nick Scarpino's AMA, which will be going up momentarily if it already hasn't. I already forget if it's up. What's, what's that one called? Is it, it's not nicknames, right? That's, that was the no, other. That's the other thing. Your, yours is Greg Wade. Tim's is Intimate. In, in, intimate, yeah. Intimate. Nick is, uh, don't nick your ball shaving. I don't know. It's something. Know, it's got Nick in it. For it. Yeah. yeah Scrappy do. Who nick the hell? Nick it Picks. Be, thank you. Frog nick Knight Joshy G. Nick, nick picks. picks. Thank you very much. What's he picking? I guess your questions. Maybe his nose. Uh, some housekeeping for you before we get into the show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. They said it couldn't happen, but the kind of funny wild aces are going to the FCF, FCF People's Championship game. It is this Saturday against the Glacier Boys. Uh, first snap is 5 p.m. Pacific time. Of course, we'll be live at 4.30 p.m. Pacific time to drink a beer with you and get ready for the game. You can watch live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. Of course, you can go to fcf.io to sign up. Maybe there's, is it FCF or is it FCF? To, oh, hold on. I haven't said it in a while. Mm. FCF. Who do you think is going to win? No, just FCF. It's going to be us. FCF. We've already beaten them twice before. FCF.io. You can go and register as a Wild Aces fan, which would let you call the plays. Of course, the Fan Control Football League is what the FCF stands for. You can come be part of it. All the action uh, this week, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, like I said already for this, the Falcon and Winter Soldier episode one reactions are up. However, if you want part one, all two hours and 40 minutes of the Snyder Cut in review part one. That is up right now on YouTube.com slash kind of funny as well. It's on podcast services under in review. Uh, we will be recording the second half of it today and posting it on Monday. So there's a lot of content out there for you right now. Thank you to our Patreon producers at the nanobiologist, a.k.a. Mick Abramson, uh, Blackjack, Trent Berry, and Blackjack again. Today we're brought to you by Purple, Brooklyn, and Burrow, but I'll tell you about that later for now. Let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. Time for some news. Five items on the Roper Report. Uh, Baker's dozen. Kevin, I want you. I know you're working on a bunch of stuff over there. As usual, you're keeping the kind of funny train rolling. I couldn't thank you enough for it, but I need you to listen up. This one pertains to you. Number one is The Rock. Dwayne Johnson in Fortnite. 
Tom Phillips at Eurogamer has the hot rumor that everyone is sharing on the internet this morning. Fortnite fans, everyone. Uh, in my circles, it's going around, blessing. Okay, all right. This is the all first right? I'm seeing it. This is the first I'm seeing it. Well, I'm excited talk. to break some news for you. All right. Is that? Right. Did you know about PlayStation buying Evo too? Because we're gonna talk about. I that did. In a I knew all. I knew about. I that just feel like that wasn't like. Is, 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 this is more broad. You know what I mean? More people are into this than Evo. It's cool. The other thing, the I mean, business fair. ramifications. I mean, a lot of people you know are into mean? PlayStation, but. Sure, but I mean, like, a, I play, if PlayStation bought Foot Locker right now, I wouldn't be like, wow, I gotta fucking click on that. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, deal, Evo and got... Foot Locker in the same echelon. <laughs> <laughs> Fortnite fans think they've and also Friday episodes always you know there's less people because the UK they're not listening because they don't have another they're, it's their week Fortnite fans think they've uncovered who plays the game's most important new character the foundation Dwayne the Rock Johnson uh, the foundation crashed into Fortnite this week as part of the game's zero crisis fun event and aided players in their bid to stabilize the island as leader of the mysterious group as leader of the mysterious group named The Seven, the Foundation appears to hold a critical role in the game's upcoming storyline and seems set to reappear as soon as he can be freed from being trapped inside the Zero Point himself. So, why Johnson? Well, there are a few clues. First up, there's a mysterious Instagram video from The Rock himself name-dropping the Foundation right at the end. It was posted on the 16th of March, the day the Zero Crisis finale event began, uh, though no one seemed to have noticed it at the time. Uh, the quote reads like this. March 16th, 2021, around the world. Today was a big day, Johnson said, going on to mention a certain global culture with, with which he shared a particular connection and similar DNA. <laughs> I don't, wait, can we find this video and play it? Because yeah, I, I, I like, the, oh, I like yeah. the idea of this coming, like people scrolling through their, their Instagram, right? And this video comes up out of context, and you're just, you're just like, what the fuck is he talking about? What, what is the Rock on about? I love the Rock, and I like watch about a lot of his Instagrams, but like when he puts up a video, I often don't click on it, right? Because I'm like, oh, I don't have headphones, or I'm not gonna listen to it right here. Yeah, here it is, Kevin. I'm sending. You, do you already have it, or should I send it to you? <laughs> Today was a big day. Send Johnson it to me. Said. A lot of things. I hear a you, brother. Again, you're keeping the ship afloat. Don't worry. How excited are you if the Rock's in this fucking game? Oh, dude, really excited. Uh, sorry. Uh, right. uh, legit, very, very excited. Can't wait for Kevin, it Kevin, it has been sent directly to you on Slack. It has 2.5 million watches. Yeah, he's a popular okay, guy. Imagine. He's talking about how March 16th around the world is a big day. I but I feel like he does this a lot, you know? He's big I mean, it's thing. definitely him. I just love piecing it's it together. March Go ahead. 16th. Go for it. And it's a little bit before midnight, so in a few minutes it's going to be March 17th. You're like, no shit, Rock. I know you know. I just wanted to catch you before March 16th ended. Because March 16th, 2021, around the world, that work? today was a big day. No. Man, today was a big day. Now, of course, today is a meaningful day, depending on where you're at in the world and what you have going on in your world. But in a certain world and in a certain culture, today was a big day. And there is connective tissue between that world and my world and that culture and my culture and that DNA and my DNA. And that is, as I continue to put in the work with my own two hands and continue to fuck these calluses up, as we, all, do, we all put in the work, this is all done to strengthen and evolve and grow the power and the force known as um, the foundation. The date, and I love that the comments we see oh, on that Instagram video are just are just fire emojis. Everybody's like, "Yeah, you tell him, Rock." Nobody knows what the fuck he's talking about, but everybody's like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Dwayne well, the Rock Johnson." You're right. I, again, like I, with all due respect to everybody, I love the rumors and I love uh, everybody. You know, de 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 deciphering this stuff as it goes. Uh, I can guarantee right now, just looking at this video, that this is 100% rock in the fucking game. Because the top, you know how Instagram boils up the people you follow? You mm -hmm. also, it, it, The top comment, number one, is Jeff Keighley doing the winky emoji. And then mm -hmm. right underneath that is Laura Mustard, who's Donald Mustard's wife, who says, love it, <laughs> and then cry emoji. So this is the fucking rock in the goddamn game, everybody. The rock's coming to the fucking game. Uh, let's cool. get back to, I'll get back to your, the, Insta, uh, the Eurogamer breakdown article, though, here, okay? Uh, similar DNA today. Uh, is, it, is this wrestling or could this be video games? He's appeared in a couple games over the years, though this could be a nod to his work on the recent Jumanji films. Quote, this is all done to strengthen and evolve and grow the power and the force known as the foundation. Johnson continued before looking to the camera and giving his trademark eyebrow raise. Next, there's the character design. And Kevin, I have a link here for you. Uh, fans have pointed to the placement of the Foundation's circular armor vent and bulky arms as reminiscent of Johnson's chest tattoos and rippling mm -hmm. muscles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tom Phillips writes, I guess. Uh, we're showing you right now the Reddit post of it right there. I mean, it's it's spot on. Like, that's... Yeah. 
Look at like yeah. in like yeah, oh, yeah the way I can, I the way the that armor is that sure. the way the armor is the blue like is yeah, uh, tattoo yeah. is that yeah. uh, you know, dark or light black I guess. In Fortnite's files, the foundation's voice lines are kept in a folder titled DJ Dwayne Johnson question oh, mark. Then there's the character's name, of course. The rock being a solid found or a rock being a, fo- a solid foundation. More tenuously, fans have also pointed to Johnson's recent work on Disney projects and the fact that Zero Crisis Finale was worked upon by Marvel's Russo brothers as another link. Mysteriously, Epic Games declined to tell me who the foundation's voice actor was when contacted earlier this week. Something's cooking. Dot 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 dot. This is, the Rock's this, in Fortnite, everybody. This is awesome. This is hilarious. This, uh, I'm, this is the best because eventually, yeah, whenever this comes, the Foundation's going to take the helmet off and we're oh, just going to yeah. have a Rock skin. We're just <laughs> It'll be fucking uh, She-Hulk uh, versus uh, Captain America versus uh, the Street Fighter folks versus an alien xenomorph and then The Rock. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Firstly, I think it's hilarious that this is the number one news story. But then also, my question to you, because we've been getting a lot of this, a lot of these Fortnite crossover updates. Like Fortnite has been riding this wave for a while now in terms of getting all, getting big celebrities, getting big characters, but getting big names in their game and having these cool big moments of, of crossing over. Do you think this ever becomes old or unexciting? <sighs> That's a great question, Bus. I think... At some point, it'll always be, it'll, eventually you're going to have to move to a point where it's only exciting for that group's fans. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Where I think right now, like, you know, this is a goofy, fun news story for a Friday. Uh, and, of course, The Rock's cool, and it's neat, and, it's ra- and like he's the biggest fucking movie star on the planet, right? And they can get him in this thing. Like, that's rad. I, I think in the same way, you take it for granted now how amazing Fortnite is and what Fortnite does and wh- how, what Fortnite has done for the industry in terms of cross-play, in terms of free-to-play, in terms of uh, any way you want to slice it and unifying people to play games, I think, yeah, you'll take it for granted that eventually it's like, oh, well, G- Dame Judy Dench is in this. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's in Fortnite. That's President cool, Joe whatever. Biden's in Fortnite. Well, he has a skin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think that'll be it. But it'll still be the big thing, right, that you'll have, like, all these different ideas for. Yeah, or, uh, I'm right you know, there. Juice for. Yeah, I'm right. I'm right there. I, I, w- during the the Marvel season, that was the thing that had me that had me going. Okay, this seems this seems dope. This seems high. And then when we got Kratos recently, that was another one that brought me back in. And I'm sure, I'm sure somewhere down the line when they finally add Peter Griffin or SpongeBob or whoever, right? Yeah. Like th- those will be the things for me where I'm like, all right, I'm back in this for a week or so just to get these sure. skins and play with these skins. Uh, and I think you make a good point that you know they're sp- they're speaking to a bunch of different fan bases when they're bringing in these things. Um, but yeah, I wonder like I I wonder how long the this era of Fortnite lasts for in terms of in terms of the hey at each season we're getting in new shit. And I, I like I wonder if that if that stays their central strategy in, in terms of building hype and building excitement for their game because it, the, with the with the with this latest update right like they're they're building a narrative they're building a story. I wonder if that is them trying to bring in more reason for people to 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 stay curious and, and stay interested in, what, in what's going on well that's the you know again where i talk i talk about you know, how much fortnite dominates and how i think you take it for granted it is the fact that think about when i you know it, kind of funny games daily started it was me and andrea talking every other day it felt like about a new record set by PUBG. Mm. And eventually those stories went from being really cool to Andrea literally being like, all right, can we stop? Let's, let's set a milestone. When it hits X, X amount of concurrent players, then we can talk about this again because it's just getting boring. And if we were sitting here just talking about the numbers Fortnite was putting up on a stream or the numbers Fortnite was putting up as a player base, you would stop talking about it. And so as Fortnite continues to be this unbelievable cash cow for Epic. It is moves like this that I think are going to continue to grab them headlines. And that's more than just a skin, right? It is a season, which is ridiculous to think about. You then have to stop and think, well, what is the next season they could do, right? That's what's, what is missing from Primal for me right now for the new chapter or the new season, right? Where it's like, I just don't care about that world, so it's not drawing me back to play it. Nanobiologist put up in chat, and I copy and paste it over here for the rocks. The rocks just I'm straight up the rock skin. He's like, it'll be like a level 1,000 skin. Like if they put like the foundation becomes the level 100 thing, and his alt style is just the rock. Just the rock. I will fucking sit there and play Fortnite until I get it. I will be all over that. I will be in there with Joey and Kevin and uh, Raj and everybody else playing every night to go get that goddamn skin. But that's what like. I liked uh, Grogu being on the Battle Pass last season, but it was like, I yeah. As much as I like the Mandalorian, I'm not I'm not going to actually play as the Mandalorian, so I'm not drawn to go all the way and play to get Grogu to get my personal friend the Rock. 
Yeah, I would. Yeah, okay. I would. Yeah, that's fair. And I guess, I, like, I could see uh, if I mean, again, if there was some somebody in there that I was very much a big fan of, right? Like, mm-hmm. a, a very like I like I love The Rock, obviously, but if they got a character or something that I was obsessed with, and it was the same thing of, hey, he, you can go through and collect all the Black Panther suits across the island to unlock this new costume. I could see myself very much getting to that and, and committing to that. Uh, Kevin Coelho, though, you're probably the biggest Fortnite fan I personally know. Does, does this do it for you in terms of Fortnite continually adding in crossover skins and crossover content? Is that a thing you just want? Is that a thing you're you're good with seeing as a thing forever for, or for the foreseeable future? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I love that. I feel like uh, every time they do that, I'm like... It's funny because it's like I never thought, oh, I really want the Xenomorph or Terminator. And then they came out and it's like, oh, it'd be really cool to run around with them. And so I got them, you know? Mm. So it's like I didn't care about this character, the Foundation, until right now. (laughs) Where it's like, oh, shit, that's clearly the rock. So Mm -hmm. if we end up getting like one, if the alt skins for the like, let's say this is for the next season or like the end and, and like the alt skins that you get. Um, is like him without a helmet, so it's the Rock at 110, and then like it's gonna the be him without the shirt two, too. It's gonna yeah, be him the 200 is without I, yeah. the shirt. Like I, me and Joey are probably gonna grind, and uh, that's exciting because we like the game, and now we have a solid excuse. They're so good at giving us solid excuses to be like, you know what, I'm gonna keep playing. That's again, like you know, the video for Blessing uh, Show this week it was about uh, Avengers, right? And what I need, I needed more content from them to go, uh, and, uh, reasons to play. Fortnite is great at giving you reasons, but it's also similar to what we're talking about. They give you so many reasons, you have to pick the ones that are important to you to get you out there to go do it. And so for me, like, yeah, I'd be right there with you that the rock shirtless, like, he just looks like the fucking rock skin would be the way to go. It would be interesting. I, I mean, you figure to do this, I assume it would be. I guess not though, because he's a foundation. I would say I would I would think this would be a deal similar to a Kratos, a Master Chief, uh, uh, a Sarah Connor, where it is like you just straight up buy it so that you they do so? it. But I'm sure. Mm-hmm. No, no, that's what I'm because like they're building talking through this my guy head. up, right? That's what I'm doing as I'm talking through in my head. Is I'm actually I, I guess they just cut Rock a huge check rather than profit share, whatever the thing was going to be. Not that I, that's probably shares. not even work. For, it's it's yeah. not how much to work. It's not how it works for the other ones too. I guess either. Yeah, actually, throughout this whole thing. Sorry, I'm thinking live as I talk. I'm to you tossing. My giant it's, coffee it's getting tossed. It's getting tossed. What did I say? What did I just say, talk about, Kev? I don't know. It was tossed. Exactly. We tossed it out. Don't worry. It's been stricken from the record. That's the way it works. I don't know if you know, blessing on the internet. You can say whatever you want, but if you immediately say toss it out afterwards, the internet has to forget. So you get away yeah, from it. They have to forget it. Go ahead and say something. Go say something that's cancelable, <laughs> and then just say, you know what? I'm throwing it out, and you won't be canceled. Go bless. Avocados overrated. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, take shit. it back! Take it back fast! You gotta take you gotta it back! Throw it out! Throw it out! Throw it out! Throw it out! There! Oh my god! Jeez! There's been a lot of dead air in this podcast as a center. Let's transition over to the next story. Number two. Oh, well, actually, you know what? Before we get out of there, I want to throw out a "You're wrong," Katie G. You're wrong, and it's actually a question, but I'll allow it. Well, I guess it is. But Greg said there are no KFGD viewers from the UK on Fridays, but I'm watching from the UK. What's wrong with Fridays? Sorry, Katie, I cut the thought off midway through, which I understand mm. we do. What I was arguing is Fridays for KFGD, and obviously kind of funny games daily in terms of YouTube views, and obviously we're way bigger as a podcast, we know that. But as YouTube views, lives and dies based on the news, but on top of that, there's always this giant rock on Fridays because I think Games Daily's usual uh, uh, watching structure, right, especially for people who are uh, across the pond in a different time zone, is they'll catch it in the morning the next day. They'll catch it on the ride to work or whatever. So when there's no work or any, well, I guess there's no rides at work anymore. But you know what I mean. When there's no, your schedule is the weekend. It's no longer your daily routine. We see numbers drop on that. So I figured we'll have some fun with the rock on the headline and thumbnail because number two is this stu- actual news story that pertains to the industry. A huge news story. <laughs> has bought Evo, everybody. Uh, We'll start with the SIE statement. In 1996, a fledgling fighting game tournament sparked a cultural phenomenon that drew an international following through, through its inspiring exhibitions of skill and fun. In the decades since, countless legendary battles in that storied tournament, known as the Evolution Championship Series, Evo, have, co- have been waged in virtual arenas of timeless games, uh, many on PlayStation consoles. Today, we're thrilled to announce the next chapter in the story of PlayStation and Evo, the world's largest and longest-running fighting game tournament. Sony Interactive Entertainment has teamed up with RTS to acquire Evo through a joint venture partnership. 
With expertise spanning esports event management, brand and developer consulting, and gaming talent management, RTS is a new venture led by CEO Stuart Saw. Greg, Greg interjecting. That's a great name. That's Stuart a great Saw. Name. I saw it, or I saw it. You know what I mean? Like Bone Saw. That's, that's huge. Good job, Bone Stuart. Bone Saw. And backed by investors, including global entertainment, sports, and content company Endeavor. Evo co-founders Tom and Tony Cannon will remain closely involved in an advisory role to ensure Evo continues to service the fighting game community and support its vibrant growth. With the support of world-class publishers, Evo is returning this year as Evo Online, a fully online competition taking place August 6th through the 8th and 13th through the 15th. Entry will be free, and players in North America, Europe, Asia, and Latin America will be able to compete in Bandai Namco Entertainment's Tekken 7, Capcom's Street Fighter V Championship Edition, Warner Brothers Games' uh, Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate, and Arc System Works' Guilty Gear Strive in an open format. The online qualifiers will be live streamed for fans, and more details will be shared in the coming weeks on evo.gg. For PlayStation, today's announcement marks an exciting step in our journey to foster growth of the fighting game community and esports and support competitive gamers widely on our consoles. Fighting games are hugely popular on PlayStation consoles, with gamers logging more than 1.1 billion hour gameplay hours in 2020 alone. We're committed to breaking down the barriers for gamers to compete at all levels and providing a best-in-class global platform for them to showcase their skills and passion. We also want to voice our support for Evo's message today about creating a safe and inclusive environment for players. At PlayStation, we've always made that our highest priority. As a collective team, we'll work closely together to ensure future Evo events are safe and welcoming for the entire community. That, of course, the official line from PlayStation. Uh, we now go to IGN, where Matt, TM, Kim has some more information about what other platforms are going on with all this. Uh, we pick up a mid-story for Matt. As for, the, uh, as for other games, uh, Evo business developer Mark Julio says, quote, Evo is still open to all platforms, and that PlayStation and RTS are allowing Julio's team to work with its community to support fighting games as a whole. Though this doesn't completely answer whether games from first-party publisher or developers like Nintendo's Super Smash Bros. will appear at future events. Matt then updated his story with this. Nintendo has provided a statement regarding Sony's acquisition of the Evo uh, or of, uh, of the Evolution Championship Series. Quote, Nintendo has enjoyed uh, engaging with fans at past Evo tournaments and wish the show organizers the best with their new venture. We will continue to assess Evo and other opportunities as we plan for future online and offline Super Smash Brothers tournament activity, a spokesperson for Nintendo said. Blessing at Ioye Jr. Mm. I know you enjoy the fight game once in a while. I've seen I you do. over there talking about it on the shows. So number one. What's your read on PlayStation picking up Evo? And then number two, does this mean the end of Smash at Evo? Uh, I'll start with number two. I don't think it means the end of Smash at Evo. I don't think this particularly means the end of Smash at Evo. I think there are other things surrounding this that could mean the end of Smash at Evo. Uh, last online? Year, was, being online? <laughs> well, what, what? yeah, being online for sure is definitely a, 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 a knock against that because play, playing any Nintendo game online is a hassle, especially if you're playing on the professional level. Uh, but then also last year, there was a whole wave of sexual misconduct stuff that was going on yep. in the Smash community, the Smash Pro community, uh, which complicates their presence at future events this big uh like they also had the, they also had the it. thing where they, they they had the modded version of smash that could work online but they yeah. said no to that and they nixed that i remember reporting yes. on that yeah like the way that, that nintendo rolls with the their uh pro sports community in terms of smash and all that stuff it's all it's always it's always been a very wonky relationship because nintendo hasn't really cared that much about the pro scene like nintendo very much caters their game their games around the casual audience and the mainstream audience and even like i mean it was the it was the big thing when brawl came out that they added they added tripping as a way to 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 take it down a notch in terms of the the competitive nature of of, of smash uh and so yeah that combined with uh, Nintendo cracking down on stuff like the on, like the online solutions that people come up with, combined with N Nintendo cracking down with quite a few things with that with that stuff, right? And then combining that with the sexual misconduct stuff that's been been going on, I think all of that points to yeah, we're probably not going to see Smash at Evo this year. Future years, we'll see, but it will take a lot of work and a lot of restructuring of that of restructuring of that community and how that partnership is going to work in order in order to see that. Um, and so to bring it back to the first question. My so when this when this broke yesterday, 
I was having a very difficult time processing like why why this is happening, why PlayStation would buy Evo, what that would mean in terms of benefits for PlayStation. Aside from the aside from the pure, we can buy Evo so we can make money off of Evo, right? Like there are a lot of things PlayStation PlayStation can buy in order to make money off of it. Uh, e- Evo is one of those things where it's like you know it's the biggest fighting game championship in the world. A lot of people love Evo. It's a fantastic time, but it's not like a I don't think it's a business that you would invest in looking to make so much money out of. Uh, that said, I think on the Evo side of things, I could see this being a good move because along with a lot of the sexual misconduct stuff that was going on last year, uh, one of the people that was involved with that was one of the co-founders of Evo who ended up uh, uh, stepping down because of it. And I could see the case where because of that, because of other things surrounding how Evo how Evo has been going over the last year, I guess I guess I guess I could see it being the case where they're like, all right, we gotta sell. We gotta find somebody, we gotta find an organization that can take this over uh and keep this thing alive for us because we're struggling trying to keep it alive on our uh, on our own. Uh and I can see PlayStation coming in and being and being the ones to swoop it in because uh I don't know if it was in this article or if it was in a different article that I read that they were talking about how big the fighting game is, the fighting game community is on PlayStation in particular. Uh, and I think that lines up, you know, I can see PlayStation going, Hey, we can, we can, we can, uh, foster this. We can nurse this and we can make this our own and truly own the, the fighting game community on our platform. Yeah. I think that's a big part of it. I did a very cursory Google here. So please, you're obviously way more dialed into this story than uh, I am. Uh, Mm -hmm. was it also last year when Evo canceled or when Evo, when smash pulled out and Evo got canceled? Was there not talk to of like, and I again, this is just me either confusing stories or not. Was there talk from them of like the actual financials being tough for them because they couldn't do the live thing, or am I totally making that up and confusing it with another story? I I don't remember them talking about okay, financials. Then throw it out. But like, but throw it out. Last last year, I mean, they did cancel the event, which I'm sure. Yeah, I heard which a I lot think, and, and that's so I think it's I'm well, sorry, it's not, I'm sorry, Kevin. What did I say a second ago? No, I'm. This is a statement that I'm making on my own, unrelated to us, obviously. Well, I didn't hear what you even said. I thought you were saying that. You, oh, that I said I, I said that I. Uh, sorry, that I uh, doesn't matter. Remember them doing that? <laughs> yeah, okay, when they, they, they can't can, canceling Evo in general and God damn it, <laughs> turn off the dings. Turn off the dings. I can't turn off the dings. This is cool, Greg's computer that I'm remote desktop into, and I can't mute it. So mm, right, I have fine. to fix Everybody, the problem that's what's he's happening. having. Yeah. No, that's okay. We keep the ship rolling. Uh, or floating. Uh, so even removing all that from it, again, striking from the record, I'm probably confusing it with another uh, story of somebody talking about how hard it was. You can extrapolate that. Guess what? It's hard to run a live event when you can't make live events. And so I'm exactly. sure that, that what, to what you're saying is there's a part of it that PlayStation has such a dedicated fighting community that it you, they have they see somebody going through this. They see an opportunity to pick this up and do it and build it in their own image and turn it, at least in some regard, to a PlayStation event in terms of like maybe they'll they'll allow the platform sure but it's gonna have the PlayStation branding everywhere when you watch like it's going to be exactly. a part of that kind of thing like I, I think that's the big thing right like because you open this up at, by asking do we see Smash at Evo right and I think <clears throat> I, I think you know PlayStation PlayStation taking it over isn't the thing that that blocks Smash in that event because that'd be a that'd be that'd be terrible right that'd be a terrible move on, on PlayStation side because why you know what's the point of not having Smash there oh I don't think it's that way I think it's a Nintendo totally. Yeah, and yeah, that's the thing is like that's that's kind of the other the other side of the coin of it. Um, but when you're able to to have Evo continue to make it the best event that it can be, and then also have PlayStation branding, also have the 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 uh, games go down on PlayStation systems and promote PlayStation as much as you can to sit alongside Evo, you that you then continue to foster the fighting game community on the PlayStation platforms and build that way. And so I think I think there's value in that. Uh, at first, at the first announcement of this though, like when you when you when you just look at it. Uh, on the timeline on your Twitter, you're uh, for me. I was just like, "What a random uh, uh, alliance! <laughs> like, what a random thing to, for PlayStation to buy and announce." But I think the more you think about it, the more it starts to make sense. I just love the idea of like PlayStation's like, "Oh yeah, Xbox, you bought Bethesda. We got Evo. We got Evo." <laughs> and, and blessing the fighting game fans, like, "What? <laughs> I'm like, why? I'm like, why?" I was legit like live on stream yesterday, and I was like, "I can't. I don't understand why this is happening. I don't get it." But I think just for the, the 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 very the very pure case of Evo Evo had a had a bad year last year, right? Like they can't they 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 shifted to online because of the pandemic and all that stuff, right? But but they ended up canceling because of sexual misconduct. Like that was the thing that ended up uh, making so that Evo just did not happen purely last year. I'm sure coming off of that, 
for the folks running it, for them losing a founder, they're probably like, we need something to, to help us. We need anything and like anything we can get. Uh, and, and PlayStation is a huge partnership. And I could I could see I, I could see the the communication back and forth of them going to PlayStation, PlayStation looking at it and being like, actually, it's not a bad idea and, and going yeah. for it. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, before we move on to uh, story number three here, I need to do this. The dog's being very cute. You know what I mean? Oh, what's, it's like, what's he doing? What's he doing? He's, he's, he's just sleeping, but he's sleeping on his little arm. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, he's sleeping sideways like a human? He thinks he's a human? He's, yeah, he's doing his little thing where he's like, all stre- like he's like stretched out on his, his little, his oh, little paw arm. Great. Here, hold on. I'll put some, I'll, I'll, I'll tweet it for you, all right? Hold on. Yes. Hold on. So, uh, blessing, you like video games. I do like video games. That's cool. You going to play some this weekend, you think? Uh, yeah, I'm going to play Redacted, <laughs> and then I'm probably going to oh, get yeah, back yeah, on New yeah. Vegas. God, I got to start uh, Redacted. Dude, get to I, I, I'm, I'm I mean, gonna, I, you I'm, know I want to, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I plan to get back on New Vegas, because I've, I've not been able to play it over the last week, because of other things we've been, play, we've been playing. Sure, um, sure, sure. But I, I can't wait to get back to it, because I've actually... Now that now that I've I've taken a few days off, I've been thinking about it a lot, and I'm like, man, I've 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 been bit by the bug again. Like the Fallout the Fallout bug is back, uh, and I can't wait to, to stream that some more. Um, while we're talking about video games, I can just start on the next news story, Greg. No, no, no. I mean, I was doing this more as a bit than anything. I can I could do more. So second screen experience is what I'm doing here. So yeah, okay. Look at how cute he is at Blessing Junior. Second screen hashtag second screen experience. Here you go, live people yeah. and like people who are watching. I'll tweet it. Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter.com slash game over Greggy. Got all the cute photos of the dog, and you're gonna see. Uh number three on the Roper report, Gotham Knights has been delayed. We go He's to fucking cute. Isn't he? This Look is how a, cute that this is. This is a cute ass. Look at how photo, adorable yeah. that dog looks right now. Oh my uh, God. We have this uh, official word from WB Montreal. Gotham Knights will now launch worldwide in 2022. We are giving the game more time to deliver the best possible experience for players. Thank you to our amazing fans for your tremendous support of Gotham Knights. We look forward to showcasing more of the game in the coming months. Blessing. Yes. I could talk about this. You could talk about this. Kevin could make 15 more dings over there as he fixes Cool Greg, and we thank him very much. But nobody wants to hear from us. Boss Baby, Barrett Yo, Courtney. What up? What do you do with this news? Um, I kind of <laughs> yawn at it, and I'm like, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, not surprising. Uh, like, a lot of people have been, a lot of industry people have been saying on Twitter, like, WB might, likes to make a big stink when they're leading up to a game, right? And we haven't really heard anything about this game that was supposed to be coming out this year uh, since they officially uh announced it right last mm-hmm. year at the in the dc in fan the dome. dome in the dome man i, I, I miss life i miss life in the dome you know? i miss the dome you know, life. yeah um yeah it, it, like i've been trying to tell people like the last couple months like i don't expect this game to actually come out this year and people were constantly responding to me like oh they've been working on it for so long and it's like i you gotta remember that wb montreal had definitely one confirmed cancel game before this yeah maybe two uh and this was not the project they've been working on since 2013 so no they haven't been working on this game for eight years uh this is we don't know like when this specific project exactly started right um and then with covid like i yeah you know it i think it's they weren't at that point right where like I forget who said it, but someone was like the miracle of why games were still able to come out this uh, last year, right? Uh, with like Animal Crossing, Doom Eternal coming right at uh, the beginning of COVID, uh, and a last bunch of the other ghosts, everything. Yeah. yeah, like those were pretty much they those were done, right? Those right. were those were complete. Whereas like a lot of games this year were like the games that were slated for this year. Are you cut out? Is he muted? Okay, he's gone. He's gone forever. Barry, you might want to leave and come back because you're muted. We cannot hear you. But, I mean, the point Barrett's making is one that I've seen driven home over and over again this week. Uh, Even today, uh, our former informer, Imran Khan, now our big bite at fan bite. (laughs) Our big bro at fan bite. Well, I don't know. That doesn't work either. The Dark Knight of Fan Bite. There we go. Ooh, that's uh, good. That's good. He tweeted, uh, I've been doing dev interviews for a work from home piece for a few weeks, and people would be shocked at the disparity between how COVID has affected indie games and AAA games. And he said this, quoting this Gotham 
tweet. And I think that is something you see time and time again. I know on this show, and I forget if it was you and me hosting Busting or if it was me and another co-host, but there was a question from the audience about like, do you think indie games were better set up to succeed during COVID? And I do, right? Because I think so many indie, and not every indie game, obviously not every game experience is the same one-to-one, but so many indie games were already working from home. We're already spread across the, the globe, not even you know the country. They were able to uh, get in there and pivot and you know not really see a disruption in their workflow. Whereas for a AAA game, for something like from WB Montreal with hundreds of people working in one siloed experience, to go home and have to worry about the IT solutions, worry about internet speeds, worry about every other uh, piece of the puzzle, like that's so impossible to do. Yeah, yeah. And in Imran's thread, right, he mentions here that there's at least one major publisher where we're ground to a halt because not everyone who needed dev kits got to bring them home or that or that there's strict security issues with everyone being work being working from home. So there's queues to do their job because they have to remote into another desktop. And yeah, those are the types of those are the types of precautions you see big AAA companies take when it comes to working on these projects that they want to be secretive. And so, yeah, it then becomes this, this big, huge thing of it work either grinds to a halt or becomes very becomes a very slow process and so i think for this this isn't surprising any honestly any triple a delay we see this year is not going to be surprising because and yeah it's 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 been a it's been a difficult year in terms of in terms of that and not only that it's the i think it's very much the brace yourself like this is the tip of the iceberg and again you know i, I don't want to i don't even want to say his name and conjure him into the real life right but John BX32, right? Like, I, you know, he, he's all out there and he's saying Starfield this year, Starfield this year. You guys don't know how long they've been working on Starfield. It's definitely possible, but I think COVID is a new ball of wax for where that game is. And, you know, as we move into number four here on the Roper Report, which is Avengers, uh, more follow-up from yesterday's roadmap and everything and a whole bunch of interviews and things that went up and uh, things I was a part of. Um Avengers, Spider-Man is coming, uh, but not in the summer, not before Black Panther in the summer, and then free-to-play isn't coming. It's Joe Scrabbles at IGN. But as the dovetail here, right, like uh, the stuff that Joe's pulling from here uh, is from the same conversations uh, we all had with uh, Scott over at Crystal Dynamics when they, they were doing pre-briefings uh, and showing us roadmap and showing us footage and talking about this. They did it with, uh, kind of funny, they did it with IGN, they did it with GameSpot. Tomorrow's got a great interview up on GameSpot. You can go around there, right? But they very much talk about like, you know, we weren't ready for work from home. And so like there's a, you know, they're, and that's not, they're not putting all their Avengers problem on COVID by any stretch of the imagination, but they are being frank and honest, right? Of like, this is a big part of why this is way harder than we thought it was going to be. And that you're going to see that time and time again. And that, you know, that is uh, where we'll talk about this eventually too. cyberpunk, right? And all of them being locked out after their hack. Uh, now this delay of Gotham Knights, this, I think, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what AAA games get out this year because I think there's so it, it just takes so much longer. And one of the things Scott was talking to me about with uh, Marvel's Avengers was the idea that like, you know, in the old days when we were at the studio, it would be we made a change, we put out a patch here, we spin it up on the dev servers, and you're playing it in an hour. And now he's like, it takes days because you have people all across the world pinging you the asset, the thing you need, making the bill, doing the stuff to get you to finally go in and be able to play it. And so, like, as we talked about yesterday on the Square Enix thing, on uh, things, and I know I think you talked a little bit about the roadmap, like the fact that Omega threat level missions still aren't there. Like, you're like, how hard is it to make something that you've been playtesting since September? Like, it's incredibly hard when none of it's there, according to them. And I believe it. And you see it right now with another delay for Gotham Knights. Yeah, and for Avengers specifically, right? I'm, I'm, uh, for that, I'm sure Crystal Dynamics working with Square Enix, working with Marvel, while being work, while working from home, right, and having mm -hmm, to be secretive mm -hmm. and all this stuff, right? Like when you, the more you factor in all these, all these different factors that come into play when it comes to making a game that big and that important, uh, the more you, you more, the more you are gonna see things get slowed down, and the more you are gonna see it become a difficult process to do that from to do that from home. And I think the one, the one blessing in disguise from the whole cyberpunk really, no pun intended, from cyberpunk. Did you ever do that? Like, how did you ever lean into? it? Did you ever do like a no. Halloween costume where it was just the big no. glasses and the nose and like a trench coat? You know, and like, what are you supposed to be? A blessing in disguise. No, because by the time I would have gotten there, what I would where I would have made made my own costume, I think I would have been already sick of it. <laughs> I would have been like, no, I'm never doing that. <laughs> um, but you know, the one blessing in disguise for the cyberpunk release, right, is I think it became it became this uh this this thing for other big developers to look at and be like, hey, let's not do that. Let's not be that. And so I think you're gonna see a lot more comfortability in terms of developers this year, big AAA developers 
being willing to delay their games to later because totally. they do not want to be the next Cyberpunk or the next Anthem or the next Fallout 76 or whatever the big uh, buggy game you want to point to might be. 100%. Uh, number four, though, let's uh, give you a couple of things here from Joe Scrabbles at IGN about Avengers. Uh, we'll start with the fact that Spider-Man is still coming. Uh, the Marvel's Avengers team is working on the promised PlayStation-exclusive Spider-Man character, but he won't be coming in, coming to the game before summer 2021 at the earliest. We spoke to Crystal Dynamics head of studio Scott Amos about the game's 2021 roadmap, which makes no mention of Spider-Man, and asked when, about when we might see the character appear. Quote, I can tell you that formally, officially, people are working on him right now, Amos replied. Uh, so it is still on our roadmap for the future, end quote. The roadmap shows a number of additions working from this month to summer and, quote, beyond. Beyond. The roadmap ends with the War for Wakanda expansion and the addition of, of Black Panther to the game's roster. And Amos made it clear that uh, Spider-Man would not arrive before Black Panther. The roadmap does make it clear uh, that it doesn't include all in-progress work, but Amos said it represents what the studio can fully commit to in the near term. Quote, but there are people working on him, he reiterated, and we still fully expect Spider-Man to come to PlayStation. Amos gave no indication of a time scale for that, however. Blessing. Mm -hmm. What a boondoggle this is. You know what I mean? I mean if, yeah. if, if if Avengers had come out and hit its stride and we had two Hawkeyes by the, by the end of November and then there was more content and all this stuff and then you got Spider-Man dropped in March and there was stuff around it, no big deal. But in a game where there's still... I, I think the roadmap's a great step forward. I think there's a lot of great shit on there. I played the Hawkeye uh, uh, introduction mission last night. Loved it. I'm excited to get back to it. I think it looks great on PlayStation 5, yada, yada, yada. All that said, like even if you get momentum... And you get to War for Wakanda and you drop it and it's awesome and Black Panther's rad and there's the cool claw villain encounter. Like your next announcement's gonna be cool. And here's Spider Man as your next character just for PlayStation. Like, ouch. Yeah. Do you think they just do you think they just drop it? Do you think no it, it is a, a a thing that they build up to in the way that they're building up to this Wakanda thing? Because for if I was them, right? Like for the Spider Man thing, we've already announced it. I I mean, I don't I I don't know if I'd just drop it on a random Tuesday, but it would be a Next week, Spider Man is coming. You know, I see. What you mean. I thought you meant do they drop it like they don't do it? No, 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 no. I mean, no, do they no, drop yeah. it like do they do a, do it do they do a Beyonce drop? Sure, where they just release it. No, it's too big of a PR beat, and PlayStation definitely contractually wants to make sure that's a big deal. I don't think it's going to be the size of Wakanda. I think it would definitely be like, hey, yeah, you know, we're you know, in a, a war table end, and it is the tease of hey, everybody, like Spider Man dropping in and grabbing something, and like mm -hmm. here's the mission you can get. I still hope that there's some wiggle room we're not seeing where it is because it just doesn't make sense when you think about it right especially right now and especially for how this game actually is functioning of it just being spider-man uh on playstation there was you know there have been rumblings of peter parker files being found in avengers and people trying to oh maybe it'll be peter parker on other things i know that sounds super lame or whatever but like some iteration of spider-man <laughs> that is able to be on xbox and playstation and stadia no i'm sorry xbox uh, stadia and pc right to cover this so it's not something that totally fucks everything up and makes people even mad m more mad at a game that by then you hope they're coming into the light coming into their own i don't know we'll have to wait and see but mm. i don't know about that one bus we'll see somebody in chat mentioned that blessing in disguise would be a great name for uh, a video series where i'm playing hitman and that is the only that is the only way i'll do it that is a good idea that is the okay. only way i'll abide by that name greenlit go get it oh we're doing it. okay sweet i'll, I'll get it going uh, next week uh joe scrabble's other uh article here was about free to play after a rocky launch that caught that's caused fan upset and commercial issues many have wondered whether marvel's avengers would pivot to a free to play model in order to bring new players in but developer crystal dynamics has rejected the idea in an interview about the game's 2021 roadmap we asked scott again uh, if he considered the free to play model his answer was clear quote for us the model we have is the model we stick with. Scott repeatedly uh, pointed to uh, the game's current model, uh, best, how it best serves its players by offering them all of its playable content for a single upfront cost. Quote, look, you buy it once, you get into, the, you get into our theme park, as it were, uh, and look at all the rides you can take. All and all the rides are part of that, and we're continually adding more content at no additional cost. End quote. Uh, Amos uh, added that the r roadmap uh, for new content should make that even more appealing when you can see what you're getting for uh, the price there. Great. I still, I, I was talking to, I think, Tamor uh, about this last night or two days ago when we were talking about Avengers because that's all we talk about. And I was like, that's awesome. And I believe it. I don't think that puts it out of the realm of Game Pass. 
Like I, I, I oh, still yeah. totally oh, yeah. see this being the way of like, listen, PlayStation's getting Spider-Man, sure, but Xbox, you can play it for free over here and you get all this content for free and the roadmap and Wakanda and yada, yada, yada. Like I still think that's not necessarily imminent, but I think that's sooner rather than later that it goes to Game Pass. Would you, figure, want, it, would you want it to be free to play? I mean, no. I, I, that's a weird question, I feel. Like, uh, do you, do you, would you feel like that shift would help would help out what they're doing with the game because it seems like the for the question of what we had at the beginning of the year for gamescast does the will imran khan say by the end of the year that that <laughs> avengers is a good game uh a big part of that is going to be p- player base right and pe- getting people in and getting people in- involved and, w- and wanting to continue continually play i figure for for free to play the question is you know like if you if you shifted to free to play would that get the amount of people you want in the game so that you can continue to make long-term content for it great question see i think you're talking about two very different things in Mm. terms of what's the measure of success i think as a player my i have no problem with the amount of people playing the game obviously i always want more so they support it for years and they make more stuff and they're super successful and they're around forever yada, yada yada but for me personally right like I want more content so that me and Tam can get Goldfarb on the phone and our friend Sean on the phone and we can all go play this and go do this. Uh, I'm not worried about that. Your question, and I think in what I've told on uh, uh, the Gamescast thing, of, uh, by the end of, end of the year, Imran will go, it's pretty good in terms of what Marvel's Avengers is. I think that comes down to them nailing the Wakanda stuff. And so like, you get the Wakanda expansion, which is far different than what they've called the story, the character missions that we've gotten here. You know what I mean? Operation... Uh, the operations that we've gotten uh taking aim and now future imperfect like those are short right like i finished the hawkeye story quest stuff last night which then set up the cosmic cube stuff we see on the roadmap and i saw this like iconic chain and a couple of the new things to do but like those are meant to be just get you back to the game give you a new character give you a reason to run calling uh you know black panther the wakanda expansion war for wakanda expansion makes me think that's going to be hours of content that that's going Mm. to be a major drop and i think that's what this game needs is more biomes more things to do more villain sectors all that jazz to run through let alone all the other fixes they've promised on the roadmap so i don't like free to play i you know i don't for me it doesn't matter one way or the other if they do free to play that wouldn't change Mm my mind and i don't think it would have such an immediate effect that it would get me to my games cast prediction that imran khan says it's a pretty good game by the end of the year okay but we'll see blessing i'm Greg. excited to give you the fifth and six news stories but i'm excited to also tell you about patreon.com slash kind of funny games if you didn't know you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games to be part of the show to get your questions right on air to get of course that exclusive post show we do each and every weekday and of course to get the show ad free but guess what jack you didn't go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games. So let me tell you about our ads and sponsors and all that jazz. We'll start with purple. As the world becomes increasingly uncomfortable, we're all looking for as much comfort as we can get. The one thing you can always count on is how comfortable your purple mattress is. That's because purple is comfort reinvented. Only purple has the grid, a stretchy gel material that's amazingly supportive for your back and legs while cushioning your shoulders, neck, and hips. I don't know how it does it. It's just fantastic. Because of how it's designed, the grid doesn't trap air. Air actually circulates and flows through it, so you'll never overheat. The grid bounces back as you move and shift, unlike memory foam, which remembers everything. That's why memory foam has craters and divots. Kind of funny, loves purple mattresses. Uh, Joey Noel sleeps on hers like a baby, uh, and she says it's super nice and soft. Uh, Right now, you can try the purple mattress risk-free with free shipping and returns. Financing is available, too. Purple really is comfort and... I'm sorry, purple really is comfort in an uncomfortable world. Right now, you'll get 10% off any order of $200 or more. Go to purple.com slash games10 and use the promo code games10. That's purple.com slash games10. Use the promo code games10 for 10% off any order of $200 or more. Purple.com slash games10. Promo code games10. Terms apply. Up next is Brooklyn and Life is too short to sleep between anything less than really nice sheets. But maybe you looked at some retailers and calculated the years of interest you'd pay on just one set and gave up. Trust me, go check out Brooklinen. Brooklinen was started by Rich and Vicky, who also tried to find beautiful home essentials that didn't cost an arm and a leg. 
And when they couldn't, they founded Brooklinen as the first direct-to-consumer betting company. They work directly with manufacturers to make luxury available directly to you without the luxury level markups. Brooklinen has a variety of sheets, colors, patterns, and materials to fit your needs and tastes. Brooklinen has over 50,000 five-star reviews and counting. They are so confident you will love their products. They even offer a 365-day money-back guarantee. And Brooklinen is so much more than sheets. They've got comforters, pillows, towels, even loungewear and more. Kind of funny, loves Brooklinen. Tim loves the sheets, but you don't need to listen to him. I love the towels. I love the sheets. Remember? Remember me, I'm Greg Miller, and I like to be soft, Kevin. I like to be wrapped up in a cocoon of softness, whether it's in the bed or whether it's when I'm buck so naked soft. coming out of the shower. So soft. Imagine that blessing. <laughs> I, did, I imagined so it. Soft. I wish I didn't. Go to brooklinen.com and use your – you're my employee. I shouldn't say that. Go to <laughs> brooklinen.com and use the promo code KFGD to get 25% off when you spend $100 or more plus free shipping. That's brooklinen.com uh, slash uh, – no, promo code KFGD, B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com. Uh, promo code KFGD to get $25 off when you spend $100 or more plus free shipping. Brooklinen.com. Use the promo code. KFGD at checkout. Uh, too familiar in the chat. Reminds me, toss it out. Toss out that part, Blessing. Toss it you out. Know? It's gone. It's done. And then Burrow. Finding new furniture is always a hassle, whether it's finding what's right, getting it delivered, or the setup itself. That's why I'm excited to tell you that this show is supported by Burrow, the furniture company that's designing smarter, simpler things for modern life at home. They built the company from the ground up to fix all the ways that shopping for furniture is frustrating. Every decision they make from the first sketch of a new couch to the fast, free delivery promise is made with your experience in mind. It's got easy online shopping, no more visits to far-flung warehouse stores, no high-pressure salespeople, plus Burroughs' world-class support team is available whenever you need them. Furniture is designed for the way you live. Their credenzas are actually tall enough to fit next-gen consoles standing vertically. The award-winning Nomad sofa has a built-in USB charger. Simple assembly. Uh, Burrow customers literally write reviews applauding the instructions for being so easy to follow. Modular design means they're easy to set up, but also easy to take with you to your next home. Fast, free shipping on every order saves you an average of $100 on large items like a couch. Right now, you can get $75 off your first order at Burrow.com games. That's Burrow. B-U-R-R-O-W dot com slash games for $75 off your first purchase. Burrow dot com slash games, 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 games. Number five on the Roper Report. Uh, Disco Elysium has been banned in Australia. This is Eddie over at GameSpot. One of the most celebrated games of 2020, Disco Elysium has been refused classification in Australia for its upcoming final cut. This effectively means it's banned in the country. As noticed by Screen Hub, the classification board, I don't know, can't say classification today, of Australia, uh, said in a statement that Final Cut was refused a rating due in part to how the game depicts sex, drug misuse, or addiction, crime, cruelty, and violence. The government agency also said Disco Elysium runs afoul of the rule about, quote, revolting or abhorrent phenomena in such a way uh, that they offend against the standards of morality, decency, and proprietary general prop. Yeah, propriety, uh, generally accepted by reasonable adults, end quote. Disco Elysium remains available for sale on Steam in Australia, just as it has been since uh, 2020, 2019. As Kotaku AU points out, the original version of the game was, quote, never really submitted for classification in Australia, <laughs> but the final cut is also coming to consoles and thus required a conf- uh, classification, it seems. Other games like Call of Duty World War II, Saints Row 4, and South Park The Stick of Truth were all edited to make it through the classification pro- process in Australia. It remains to be seen whether the developer... A or Z A slash U M. I I I remember giving them an award at Dice. Is, is do you spell it out or you say? Zayum? I don't know. Zayum mm-hmm. Zayum sounds right. Like it could be right. We'll edit the final cut to allow it to be sold in Australia. So I, as usual, listen, America. Do we have problems? Of course. People can get guns really way way too easily. Very way easily. too easily. Way, way I mean, too easily. We should really change that. Uh, it's frustrating that we haven't, but let me tell you, you can buy whatever game you want. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh man. You, know? I didn't you might get see, shot didn't... in the street just walking to get your, your, your milk, but you get I was excited for Disco Elysium. I've been looking forward to, to it coming to console. I didn't realize that it was this cool. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? Fucking so cool. It, revolting or abhorrent phenomena in such you a way that, that offend against the standards of morality, decency, and, propri- and propriety. I don't even know you could describe fucking cool ass shit that way. That's not. I hope cool. the, it put that as a box quote on it. Yeah, you know I hope they I mean? put it on the on the back of the box. Jesus, I'm gonna play the shit out of this game. Holy, this cow. is something that's been around as long as I can remember for Australia games and stuff. To the point of like, what was it? Um, 
left for dead. Like when you shot them, it had to be like flowers that came out of their head. You're wrong me on that. I remember there couldn't be blood, so there was like flowers in some zombie game or something like that. Uh, getting all that out of there, you are excited for Disco Elysium on console? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Like, me I too. mean, I, I'm, I'm also kind of. Um, I'm I'm kind of messing myself up right now by playing New Vegas because I'm 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 getting the RPG fix that I was looking for and so I'm hoping that I don't you know spoil my appetite for Disco Elysium but from everything I've heard people talk about Disco Elysium in the year that it came out uh, and all the praise that it's gotten even as a CRPG CRPG which is a franchise which is which is a genre it normally doesn't necessarily speak to me I've yeah. heard plenty of people who aren't traditionally into CRPGs get into Dis- Disco Elysium and praise it and so that's the thing particularly that has me excited that's my hope uh you know i played it when it was making the rounds for game of the year kind of stuff or whatever and it was pc and i wasn't down for sitting around doing that but like console voice acting the amount of people like you know, lucy james was obsessed with it and talked about how a great the story is and how uh especially when i was looking for a detective game that would be up my alley i looked at it then on pc but then remembered it was coming to console so i was ready just to wait for it and not long now blessing not long and, now and as here in show. america where again I could be caught, I could catch a bullet mid show, but at least I get, to, you know, I mean, like at least I got my freedom to play games. Oh yeah, I'm I sure get shot. It. And if I'm I get sure, shot sure. too, if I don't have health care, it's kind of a huge fro- fucking problem too. You know what I mean? Like not really any safety yeah, effort on that one. It'll be a very big problem. So uh, I mean, like, but it's like give and take in America. You know what I mean? Yeah, I pay taxes. Games. I pay a lot of taxes, and it's like. And then go to a universal health care, which is kind of fucked up when you think it about goes it. A lot of, most of it goes to the army. <laughs> and like, I don't, and I don't want, I, don't, I pay all these taxes and I don't want the guns out there. But yeah. Still, the guns I mean, are still hey, out there. Australia will get an edited version. They'll replace all the sex with cats. Yeah. It'll be great. And they, they what? They're going to have like 300 spiders to deal with in their life, too. So they, you, don't know, that's not, you don't have to worry about it. Don't worry about it. Give and take. Give and take, give and take, you know, it ebbs and flows, yin and yang. <laughs> Six and final on the Roper Report was one spiders that was... or guns? <laughs> <laughs> was, hey, take I'm not going to get some wolf man spider up my butt in the middle of the night, you know what I mean? <laughs> Eating me from the inside out. Kevin, is that, what, is that Kev. what Wolfman spiders do? Is they that, eat Kevin, that's what I, 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 butt? <laughs> that's what I understand. Australian wolfman spiders will burrow inside you and eat you from the inside out. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. That's what the Thank you, Kevin. That's science with does. Kevin. There you go. There you go. <laughs> right in there. <laughs> and then just right starts gnawing. Starts gnawing. And it yeah, doesn't I don't like stop that, man. Until you Keep, drop. That's why that's everybody in Australia say. sleeps with really tight underwear. Number six on the Roper Report. <laughs> uh, the next big cyber pack. Tw- tw- <laughs> Next big, Cyberpunk 2077 patch will fix cops and cars. This is Ethan Gotch over at Kotaku. CD Projekt Red released a weird update on Cyberpunk 2077's next big patch today, including a brief explanation of changes coming to how its open world works, delivered by an in-universe news broadcaster. Ethan writes, sigh. Uh, you can listen to Night City News editor uh, Gillian Jordan cryptically tease these changes in a series of videos that show them in action. But here are some of the major bullet points for Patch 1.2. Greg, before yeah. before you even get there, I want to I I, I want to um, uh, point out this thing, right? Because they talk they talk about the the in universe explanation, like the news broadcaster giving us the 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 uh, 1.2 updates. When I when I uh, copied and pasted the blog link into the into the slack for when we we're putting together kfgd yeah I, legit I, I pasted the link from the blog and you were doing uh in review for or not in review you're doing one Wanda, not one division falcon and the winter soldier reaction strike two <laughs> <laughs> you're doing falcon and the winter soldier reactions so you're like bless can you help me put this in the doc and so i went into that blog post to like try and sift through and see what the update was and sure. let me tell you reading from from the cyberpunk blog about this update is the most cryptic like un like uh, you you can't make it out because they they really did go all the way in terms of being in universe and having them talk about shit with all the cyberpunk slang and so like the gist of it is they're fixing cars and cops but they they i don't know why why they went this route but um they ba- they basically made the blog this un-, un un um i can't think of the words today uh this thing that was just fucking difficult to read and so unintelligible unintelligible yes that was the word i was looking for uh, real quick too, PJ Julian in the chat says, "Did Greg did Greg platinum Cyberpunk?" And he does one of these things as if he's questioning me. Uh, I did, motherfucker. So now you have to gift two subs. I've decided in the chat. That's what I'm doing. Uh, here's the, what's in. They fixed the thing that you they couldn't... did fix it. Yeah, yeah it was oh, great. Oh, look at you. It. Good for you, Greg. Good for you. You Thanks, getting Kevin. everything Thanks, you want Kevin. this year. 
I am. It's Greg's year, everybody. You just live in it. Uh, patch 1.2 goes like this. Fewer cops randomly spawning directly behind you the second you put a toe out of line. Adjustments to speed and steering to make driving easier, including a sensitivity slider. Tweaks to make cars control better even when the frame rate dips. A new, quote, unstuck feature that activates when you accelerate but don't move because you're stuck on something you have encountered some other strange Night City anomaly. Uh, the option to turn off double tapping the movement key to dodge. Uh, more options for WASDA uh, bindings on the keyboard. And that's it. And this back to Ethan. For now, at least. Patch 1.2 is supposed to fix a lot of underlying performance issues with the game as well, especially on consoles, where it's still hard to recommend playing Cyberpunk 2077 unless you're on next-gen hardware. Blessing, can you fucking believe it? Cyberpunk still isn't out for PlayStation 4? That, that, that was the on, thing on that store, I, I just thought about. Store. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I can't, I, I, I'm can't. i surprised they haven't gotten it back yet. I wonder if it ever comes back to PlayStation at this point. Well, it's, it's, I doubt it, right? Like, why? I I, 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 I mean, guess the money part of it, but like, you got your money and the people who didn't refund it, and nobody seems to give a fuck. Nobody fucking cares. This isn't. Yeah, it, I don't like. We not got like we 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 do a PlayStation podcast, and I've rarely ever gotten tweets of like people asking, "Where's the Cyberpunk PlayStation version?" It seems like nobody really cares that much. Yeah, the world moved on. I felt in so many ways, yeah. and I think you know, as you sit there and wonder about whatever they're gonna do, I guess maybe when they start I mean, drop dropping the big patches, maybe. I, I, I mean, I wonder the ne- if the next time we see it on PlayStation is if they do a PlayStation 5 version. But I wonder yeah, well, if, they're supposed I, wonder to be if Play- on, right? I wonder if SIE is like, no, <laughs> you're not putting this game on. Another platform. great question. Yeah, too. If it's just going to kick up another hornet's nest when that eventually does happen. But man, cyberpunk. Blessing. Greg. I'm excited to see what other game becomes the cyberpunk of 2021. But that failure is so far away. If I wanted something more immediate, say what came to the mom and grop shops, where would I go? You would go to the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show hosts each and every weekday. Uh, out today, can't drive this on PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox Series X, Slash S, Slash 1, Switch, PC, and Mac, Plants vs. Zombies, Battle for Neighborhoodville on Switch, Angry Video Game Nerd 1 and 2 Deluxe, Xbox One, Root Film on Switch, uh, Sumutara, no, no, Sumatra, Sum- Sumatra, I know that word, uh, Fate of Yandi on Switch, uh, Cargo Crew Driver Switch, Bite the Bullet, PS4, uh, this, is a, uh, this is both a, out today and a one for new dates, Cozy Grove is out today on Apple Arcade and coming to PC, Switch, PlayStation, and Xbox April 8th. Speaking of new dates, Gregway, Ninja Gaiden Master Collection is coming, the trilogy containing the classic game Ninja Gaiden Sigma, alongside the beloved titles Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 and Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge will release digitally on June 10th, 2021 for Switch, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One consoles, uh, alongside, of course, PC on Steam. Uh, the Dark Side Detective, a fumble in the dark, will be available to download on Steam April 15th. The game will also be available on Switch, PS4, or P- PlayStation, Xbox, Google Stadia. Say no more, or say no more, will be launching on Switch, uh, and PC, and Mac, iOS, uh, April 9th. Man Eater comes in Nintendo Switch uh, May 24th, or no, I'm sorry, May 25th. And then IGN reports the Airship Among Us's new map will be released on March 31st, 2021, alongside a new update that has the ability to pick which room you start in, ladders, a basic account system for moderation, and oh more. God. That's big, Greg. I'm so excited. This is going to be bringing me back to Among Us big. Is it? Yeah. Like, for real? <laughs> Because you yeah, were no, big on it for serious. a while. You were playing it left and right. Yeah, I love Among Us. Yeah, and uh, I'm I'm in a, a Discord channel with the group I usually play Among Us with. And when they dropped this news, that that group got reignited. We started talking about it more, and we're we're all very excited about it. Awesome. Well, I'm I'm proud of you. I'm I'm looking forward to your uh, opinions in April. All right. Yeah. No, I'll bring them. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to, if you're watching live, twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. Of course, you can go. To kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Tell us what we screw up as we screw it up. Guess what? Perfect show right now. We already, anything that was in here, we already tossed in there. We're fine. Katie's okay. She understands what I meant about UK not watching. I mean, you guys got lives to live over the weekend. You got to go salute the queen or whatever the hell it is you do on Saturdays and Sundays. I don't know what's happening over there. The queen. (laughs) (laughs) She walks down, she walks down the Thames and they just all go like, Good job, Queen. Do, how are you walking they, on the? How are you walking on a river? <laughs> I guess do, that's what it does, though. The UK people do the same salute we do. They don't got a UK salute. No, they had more. Did you see how they did? I, there was more yeah, like no, this. There was, yeah. more, there was like a flare to it. Yeah, there was got more it, risk to it. Yeah, that yeah, makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. Ours is very stiff. It's very lame. Yep, very mm-hmm. stiff. Theirs was uh, like I don't know about lame. Structured, you know. 
Yeah, but I like theirs because there's more there's more pomp and circumstance to it. It's back right, to right. I mean course, it makes you feel special. Blessing, sure. I know you've already watched all two hours and forty minutes of Snyder Cut in review. We right. talk about why do they wear wigs? Why are they wearing wigs when they're doing lawyer stuff in, in the UK? They, Kevin looked into it. It's so that when it rains, they can squeeze it out and have nope. a nice juice out of it. That's a lie. Who knew? That was a lie. That's, that's what, what you said. That's what I was expecting. That's what that's we said. Good. That was that's the show. What Nick She only said. likes me for my wig juice. I think I'm gonna let it loose. Remember that? Pimp juice, no. Nelly, everybody. Pimp juice, oh, Nelly. wait. Sing again. She locks me for my wig juice. <laughs> I think I need to let it loose. Okay, no, okay. I, I hear it now. I you hear really want to put your feet on my rug, don't you? I said you want to put your feet on my rug, don't you? You're in a hurry. Slow down. God, what a jam. Everybody, that's oh, it. I miss hey, I'll do it all for you. I'll do it all. Alexa, play Pimp Juice. And there you go. For everybody, it's playing right now. You all got Pimp Juice. Hell if you're yeah. Listen there. You're, you're welcome. My wife just slammed the door, too. I think she's trying to have a business meeting. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's get out of here for the weekend. We got a post show to do, of course. Patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Uh, if you don't want to follow us over there, you can uh. keep watching live on Twitch. What? No. You're live on Twitch is going to be Nick <laughs> continuing to play Control. Uh, there'll be some Fortnite after that. Of course, that's twitch.tv slash kind of funny games uh if you want to watch it later and you were listening to this podcast and you're in the uk and you just got done saluting the queen as she floated down the thames walking uh, remember you can go to youtube.com slash kind of funny plays catch all of our uh streams there archive streams there and you're wrong katie says i've never saluted the queen which you must be on the run wow. from the mi6 yeah, or whatever after you you know what i mean they're out there looking for you the mi6 are right behind you your host for next week are this monday it's blessing and tim it's a weird week well monday blessing and tim tuesday me and gary uh wednesday blessing and janet uh garcia uh thursday tim tam again and then uh, hold on Friday is blessing and blessing and blessing and Khalif oh, no, Adams. Khalif oh, Adams. Oh, let's go. Sorry, it was uh, it wasn't a full confirm yet from Kai. I had to get it in there. Now it is. It's done. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a post to do. Patreon.com slash kind of funny games. But until next time, it's been a pleasure to serve you. <laughs>